Christ. Amen. The story is told about uh, four pastors that once got together, and uh, part of the discussion that they were going to have during the, the course of the time that they were spending together was what was the best translation of the Bible as they were preparing and getting ready for the, the work that they always did and, and sharing that word with the people that they served. Of course, there were a number of different opinions on the course of what was the best translation. There were still a couple that, that held on to that, to that old King James. They just they loved the sound of that old Elizabethan, that old Elizabethan English. And the way it just... It had a certain poetic way of sounding as it was spoken. There were some, of course, that held on to the Beck translation of the Bible. It's a, the one as being one probably a, a little more literal, a little bit more stiff, but, but by and large a little closer to the Hebrew and to the Greek as it was translated. And then there were some that liked the newer translation, some the, the ESV and, and a couple of the new NIV, because after all it was more the way that, that people spoke. It was easier to understand for, for people these days as opposed to, to the older translations. And so they went back and forth on it, and, and it seemed like as they were discussing different things, there was, there was one gentleman that didn't seem to have an opinion on the matter, or so they thought. He sat kind of quietly off in the corner a little bit, and just kind of thinking, and, and pretty soon they pressed him a little bit, wanting to get what, what his answer was, what he thought was the, the best translation of the Bible. And as he, he hesitated for a little bit, he, he simply responded by saying, I think I like my mother's translation the best. Now, of course, he wasn't trying to diss any of the other translations by any way, shape, or form, but, but the point that he was trying to make was, was perhaps a little bit other than what they had thought about. The point that he was trying to make is simply this. You know, there are a lot of very learned men and scholars that do a fantastic job of, of translating the very, you know, words and, and phrases and idioms involved in the, the, the original languages and, and bringing them into the English. But the, the true translation that really means anything is the, the kind of translation that can take the word of God from a written, liter, a, a written literal thing and translate it into a practical. Something that people can see, something that people can understand, something that people can, can read, perhaps, one might say, without necessarily flipping a page. You see, his mother had been for him that kind of translation. She, by virtue of her life, as she had raised him, had shown him the, the truths of Scripture in a different kind of way, other than simply reading to him. She actually displayed for him the truths of what God's Word said and how they, in accordance with their love for God, were to live for him. And her patience. Her understanding, her, her gentleness, her forgiveness, they were all on display for him to read from the time that, that he was a little child so that he knew, even without turning a page, exactly what it was that God had done for him and that what God in love looked forward from him. His mother's translation had been his way to be able to see and to understand the love of God without having to even read single word. I suppose in a matter of speaking, in a way of speaking, one could well say that each of us is our own translation, couldn't we? I mean, you could honestly say that in a, in a way of speaking, uh, the way that you and I live our lives is a way of translating the Bible, so to speak. If that's the case, if each of you is your own translation of the Bible, if the, the way that you live and the things that you do and the way that you speak are the way that you show the people around you the love of Christ that lives in you, well, how reliable a translation are you? How reliable a translation are you? Uh, when that, 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 that odd, strange kind of person, that, that new freshman coming in, you know, kind of meets you in the hall and gets a little bit too close to the, the comfort zone of things, uh, how do you respond? What kind of translation of God's love does he see in you? When you're down underneath, right, you, you got the ball and that one guy, a big hulk of a guy down under the basket, keeps pushing and prodding and shoving one direction after another. What kind of a translation of God's love does he see in you? 
when you're out and about. Nobody knows, perhaps you didn't even bring your, 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 your sem paraphernalia with, this, with you this time. And you're, you're out in the mall or you're over to the movie and you're doing all kinds of things that, that groups of teenagers do. And, and the people that are there are, are watching you and looking at you. Do they see a translation of God's love in you? You realize and understand that there are some people that will never flip a page in a Bible? And you, by your lives, may be the only Bible, so to speak, that they get to read. You are the ones that Jesus has given the responsibility to, as he tells us in Matthew chapter 5, to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father is in heaven. You are an embodiment of of the scriptural truths and the faith that he has given you that allows you to be able to reach out and to be messengers, to touch people with the message of his grace and his love and his forgiveness in a way that perhaps some of them will never know in any other way. What kind of a translation are you? How reliable are you? Are you the, the best translation out there? Or perhaps are there a few weak spots in the way that that comes across? We have to thank God, each and every one of us, don't we? For in spite of the fact that the, the translation that some people might see is, is certainly not the translation that reflects a true understanding of God's love. We, we have to thank Him for the forgiveness that us in Christ for that. We have to, to pray to him, don't we? And we have to repent because there are times when if somebody honestly took a look at the way that we spoke or the way that we live, uh, it isn't God that they're seeing in the course of those things. But you know what? In spite of the times that we fail, in spite of the times that, that we fall short, in spite of the times that we, well, aren't the best of translations, <coughs> our God has lost the forgiveness. And not only does he forgive us, but he then he gives us a new day and, and a new opportunities to do better the next day. See, the love of Christ that forgives us is what compels us to now go and do, well, perhaps what we hadn't done quite so well before. So then, thanks to him, others might see him in us and come to know him as he truly is. And there's a, a lot of different arguments, especially now. There's a lot of different translations coming out. And, and you realize there's a lot of people who are going to argue a lot of different things about which translation is best and back and forth and through. And everybody will have their own opinion. But you know what? You and I as believers, knowing what Christ has done for us, realize this simple thing. You and I need to be the best translations we can be. Oh, not because in some way we're going to earn God's way, but simply because we have been given God's way. And that way is in Christ Jesus. And knowing what Christ has done for us and how he has shown his love to us, so also you and I need to then reflect that same love to others. Be the best translation you can be. That's really what our, our lesson is. <coughs> be the best translation that you can be in love to your God for what he's done. Be the best translation that you can be so that others can see him in you. Be the best translation that you can be so that if somebody else that you run into never even turns a page of their Bible, they can see Christ in you. And in that way, we are indeed messengers for Christ in many, many ways. Amen. Please rise, Frog. <coughs> Dearest Lord, you have called us to be your witnesses in a world of darkness and ask us to shine with the light of your Son. Yet far too often our lives do not reflect the truths and ways that you would have us show. Help us, Lord, we pray, to live our lives in such a way that your love and forgiveness may be seen in us. Let our lives be the kind of translation that leads others to want to know and rejoice in you too.
Lord, this we pray in our Savior's name, and in His name we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are Yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Please be seated. We conclude our service with the singing of our hymn. God's word with us. Two chapel announcements. The first is for everyone from the student council. Time is running out. Please place your flower gram orders in the IDO by Friday. Also, please check out the white t-shirts for sale there also. They are blacklight dance approved and will be decorated at the dance on Friday, February 25th. Then to the student body from Dean LeBaire. Every year, the sophomores in composition and speech participate in an essay contest. This year, Cassie Hayes' essay, Straight Paths, was selected as a top 10 essay for grades 10 to 12. Cassie will receive a $25 check 
as well as a copy of the essay anthology. Congratulations to Cassie for that. That's good. Really nice. <laughs> well, it looks like we got another announcement. Thank you. 